Welcome back to the Compound Podcast. This is episode 207 of the Compound Podcast, presented by Connect Roasters. ConnectRoasters.com for all of your coffee desires, whatever you desire. Connect Roasters can fill it light, medium, dark, cold brew, pods, equipment, whatever you do. Need. They, do they sell cold brew in like in like a can, like in a bottle, like just cold brew? Oh, yeah. Cold brew yeah. cans. I'd be cold interested in some of that. Maybe you could pull some strings and pull get some, some strings, sent my send way. Send you some? Yeah. Um, you're maybe, an investor. You, can take maybe. A, you know what? I'm sure you have cold brew at work. You have cold brew in the fridges at work. They supply that for you? No, just they have pods, though. They have pods. They got Keurig there. They That's don't supply it? cold brew. That's all they we're doing? They cold brew. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you, they, we got like a Keurig. Uh, they have coffee, but not Do like cold brew. a suggestion box? Uh, no, but if they did, I'm putting it in there. Yeah. Let's make a suggestion. You should make a suggestion box. Don't tell anybody. Put a suggestion box out there and then put one piece of paper in that says provide cold brew for the staff. I think it'd be immediately called out like, who the hell put this here? And I'd be like, I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, it just yeah. showed up today. Not me. <laughs> but I think yeah. we all like coffee. That sounds like a good idea. Whoever yeah, put that in there, this. good call. I, everybody else in favor? <laughs> we have the, uh, we actually have the cans. Last year we had the cans at Wrigley and we're working on, uh, working on a little smaller can. A little less ounces. So uh, that'll be because we had 12 ounce cans, like a lot of, lot of ounces. Give me the other way. Give me 24 ounces. Uh, you know what? I agree. I agree. Some, maybe the, uh, maybe the rules say that you can't have too much caffeine in one container in well, the clubhouse. Like it, well, that's like at Starbucks where the yeah, nitro, the nitro cold, cold brew, they cold can only brew. do. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, they're like legally like else. we can't give you more than that. I'm yeah. like, what do you mean? I can handle it. Give it to me. I'm ready. Connectroasters.com. Two codes. Two codes. Code compound club for 25% off your first home run club order. That is a coffee shipment straight to your house uh, once a month. Or code compound 15, 15% off site wide. Go get yourself a bag. Go try it out. Connectroasters.com. Our star of the show just walked away. Uh, just got into Atlanta. Um, Zach Short yes. is now a Boston Red Sox. <sighs> yeah, that hate was it. it. We hate it, Tom. We hate it, but we love it. I always Sorry, loved go it. Ahead. I always loved it. Fenway is awesome. Um, you know, when I got a call that I, I got traded there, it was pretty special. Um, Growing up close to there, going to there a bunch. Um, and I mean, going out there, I mean, it, we played the Sunday day game, um, started that game, and, you know, it was packed. Um, just like the energy around Fenway is awesome. There's always tours going on around, like, even early in the morning. I got there at whatever time. You know, the place was just buzzing. And I remember, you know, going up the stairs to uh, to go onto the field was it was pretty special. You know, I haven't, I haven't been in that dugout ever. Like not even for the Cape thing, Ian, like, you know, what we talked about, um, like they never, you don't let you get that close. So like when I stepped up, I looked left or I looked right, you know, like I usually do. No, no, no. Yeah. Yes. Because of the, um, everything was flipped. Obviously you come in for the away dugout, you know, you're like, Oh shit. And I looked up and I was like, wait, what? It was just like completely flipped. I just com didn't even realize it, obviously. Um, but it's interesting. The F Fenway is obviously such on a small piece of land where they can't they can't build anywhere else. So all of their facilities are basically on top of each other. So like you have to go to another level to get to the training room and then another one to get to the cafeteria. And I mean, I was just running into wall to wall, basically trying to figure out where I was going that first day. Um, a lot but, of stairs. Yeah. Like you had, so like the locker room is basically on the ground floor and then you go up a few stairs to go into the training room. Then you have to go up a flight of stairs to get to the cafeteria and the weight room. Cause you it, can't, you can't like, you can't go out, you know, get your steps. Yeah. I mean the yeah. Cubs, same thing with the Cubs, the Cubs went down. Right. Cubs went down under and blew everything up. You guys don't really have that luxury. How's the clubhouse on the on the home side? Um, it's nice. It's it's nice. It's I, I think I don't know when that. Yeah, it's small. It is really. It, small. it was redone though. Yeah, it looks pretty new. Um, like they have the fancy lights and stuff in there. Um, but I mean, it's it's definitely small. But it's like part of that. Yeah. Like 
It's like part of it. It's just like you walk in and that's like what you expect. I did not expect like the Mets locker room was absolutely huge. And like (laughs) you walk in this door and you're just like, oh, everybody's pretty close. Um, Didn't you say isn't isn't Wrigley like that, Ian, too, where it's pretty huge? Like it's like I didn't even know this guy was here. I didn't even see him over there. Well, it's changed. Yes. Wrigley is big, but we had a, it's a big circle. And so we had couches in the middle. They had like um, they had like a bar in the middle that was probably whatever bar height would be, right? Like five feet. And mm-hmm. so with bar with bar stools, and then there was like circle couches in the middle, and that's how they built it originally. And for years, we were like, "Can we get rid of this because you can't see the other side of the locker?" Room. So like guys that would sit on the other side like you felt like you couldn't really have a conversation across the locker room and so just this offseason they ripped it out and put in some just like normal couches and chairs so you can see all the way across and it's a lot better but yeah Wrigley and Wrigley downstairs like where our weight room training room and food room it's huge now like it's huge Zach for my for my reference is Fenway similar to like Mesa or is it bigger than that it's probably different, Mesa. obviously, but I'm saying like size wise, room? like in Cubs, uh, spring training, uh, big, big league, obviously. No, it's definitely it's it's I wider, forget, but it's not as long. I forget how long ago that was for you that you probably forget that. I forget it's like that's five yeah. years now, yeah. yeah. 20, uh, but yeah, 20 is my last one, yeah. Um, it's 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 honestly, it's just a, it's a square that's. Mm-hmm. It's just not like the Cubs one in Arizona was like a long, like a, a um, like long, a like oval, line, basically. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, but the Fenway is like a square, and they have they even have some lockers in the middle. It's it's I don't know, man. It's like like Wrigley, you know. It's just like yeah. part of it. Um, Ian and you just play there for the first time. I. Their batter's box is the greatest batter's box ever. Their dirt is the greatest dirt that I've played on. And Jeez. I remember going when we when we played there last year, you know, even a day game, it stayed soft the whole entire game. Stick in there nice. Oh yeah. I uh, pretty... sorry, I'm gonna stay with the locker room for a second. Mm-hmm. I the I would I'm sure some people complain about the visiting locker room and are like, it's tiny and you there's Everything's on top of each other. I think it's awesome. I think it's part of the part of the charm. Everything yeah. being small and room to room and just all the people that have played and been in that space. Like I think it's great. Why doesn't why doesn't the Coliseum get that same treatment than when you go there and there's flooding? But that's the thing though. That. Like I, I know Zach loves the I'm Coliseum. on record saying like I know dude walking down those stairs to the du- or to the dugout and like by the people, and I'm like Dude, it's just part of it. Like, yeah. I, I think it'd be different. Uh, like, if that place was rocking every night, like mm-hmm. Miggy would. He said it in the past. Miggy was like, "Bro, that place in the playoffs was one of the scariest places I've ever played." Like, you literally have it. to walk face to by people face to face down the stairs and before the dugout. I think a couple of reasons why you don't get the same treatment. Uh, Fenway was built in nineteen twelve. Yeah, and the Coliseum was built in 1966. <laughs> That's fair. And uh, uh, Fenway is constantly sold out, uh, 30 to 38,000 people every night. And the Coliseum has yeah. two to not that many, five not that many. <laughs> Who cares there. how many? Just not that many. <laughs> it's the app. If the Coliseum, like Zach said, if the Coliseum had 50, 60,000 people every night, like, yeah, you'd be like, this place is banging, even though the facilities aren't my favorite. It's pretty dope that you two are playing for like, uh, obviously like Yankees and Dodgers as well, but like two of the most like historic franchises ever. Like, like obviously, like you're saying, the stadiums are sick. I feel like I've never been in Yankee Stadium or like really around that area, but I feel like Fenway and like Wrigleyville. I don't know what they call the area around Fenway. Fenwayville, maybe, probably not. Wrigleyville and around Fenway. Like, I feel like those are like the two coolest areas around any ballparks too. Like, I feel it's, like they're just electric places to be. There's, it's and cool. there's like in the middle of the city. They're just like part of the city. So I, I was going to say you can drive but like on the highway. I don't know if it's 95 or whatever behind Fenway. And like you're basically like right on the green monster. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Whenever Tom like turns his camera on, shoot. I'm thinking he's going to say something like defending the Yankees. That's why I laughed. And then he turned it back off. I thought he was going to say something about the Bronx. He'd be like, the Bronx is sick. And I'm like, you're lying. All I was going to say is that my uh, friends, Aiden and Julie, used to live in Fenway, like in the area right around Fenway, two blocks from Fenway. And I went up to their apartment once while everyone else was in the car. And when I came back, my friend was like, you'll never believe who we just saw. And it was Rich Hill running around in the Red Sox, uh, the, the City Connect, the blue and yellows, running just in his shoes, just around the, the streets of Fenway in the neighborhood, just around. So they saw him. So that's, that's the so kind sick. of stuff you get when you live near Fenway. Yeah. And like that's at Wrigley, awesome. you get like guys biking to the field. Yeah, exactly. Have you gotten to watch, I'm sure you have, Devers BP? Um, no, but he took BP today on the swing. Did you get to watch it today? No, no I, I think he's saying he hit a homer. Hit a homer. <laughs> oh, he hit a homer today? Yeah, whoa. Dude, I went out to watch his BP. I, didn't, I went out, and he was hitting BP. And he was just going oppo tanks yeah I don't think... over the monster and i was like oh my god he bro he hit a ball the other night um this is my f- yeah so we were in minnesota first inning hits a double like 112 pull side but like he start you know he's his stance is so unique like he stands right. there like on one basically like he's standing on one foot with his foot like basically right behind the other Starts so early and gets this like late tip, and <clears throat> I was watching him because I was like I haven't really I haven't seen him play before really. I was like oh I want to see what a swing you know I want to see what it looks like in person, and I thought this ball was going to be by him just like the way the whole thing kind of looked you can kind of see it, and he was doing it doing it, doing it and like at the last second he like tipped, and was just like wow. Yeah. And it was the quickest and loudest thing. I And if this ball just went, and I turned around and I was just like, that was the most impressive thing. Like, yeah, I mean, that's nothing. That's just like a regular double for Rafi, you know? And then he hits a double oppo. And it's so true the way he hits it. Bro. Like, it just keeps going. Dude, he hits the ball so hard. And he hits, a, he hits absolute rockets backside. Rockets. And anything down in the zone. He is scooping it. Scoop? I mean, he's he's a good player. He's a beauty right. man too. He's he's really fun to watch in the four days that I've been here. Zach, I had a question about your batting stance. Um, I have noticed why do you do that little hip twist thing? If you know what I'm talking about, a little a little turn with the left hip, like when you're yeah. in the box. I've never seen I, you do uh, that until this year. So Didn't I jiggy with it down there. I just didn't. I was just curious that he said getting jiggy with it. Uh, I was just curious, like your thought process behind it. So I've this off season, I really worked on coiling my back hip um, to control it, and so I don't fall forward, which I'm not really doing very well right now. I was in spring, Um, but it's just like a preset feel because I have a hard time getting into it and then around it. So now, if I can just kind of get into it and around it to start. As soon as I pick up, if I'm doing it correctly, I'm coiling as I'm going forward, you know, kind of building a lot of energy and then to let it go. Um, it's pretty similar to pitching. You know, actually, you know, who did it too, obviously, for a long time was Kenley Jansen. I saw him today for the first mm-hmm. time. He got on there He's and he player. was like, <laughs> doing his thing. And I was like, hey, that looks familiar. And then, and then you went on the plane and you're like, hey, Kenley. Hey, KJ, that was talk, nice. Talk we got a little thing that. going here. You said, did you get that from me, man? Yeah. You're welcome. You, you've been watching me, huh? <laughs> That's that was another Cora. guy. That, that, that guy was is... Huh? Sorry. Go ahead. I'm going to keep asking questions, but you you talk about Kenley for a second. That's another guy. We've talked about him before, too, but I first, like, I didn't say... Like, I want to say I forgot that he was on the Red Sox, but, I, like... I walk in the locker room and like he walks by me and I'm like, whoa. He's a big man. He is huge, dude. Huge. And he didn't throw for, today was the first time he's thrown since I've been here. And I was like, this is gonna be a treat to watch. And like 
He just manipulates his timing every single. He'll have like a huge leg kick. He'll have a double leg kick. He'll slide step. The one he threw today was at a horizontal. I think of uh, it's like negative seventeen, basically, on a cutter. And I was just like, "Ew." Maybe not that much, but I was just like, "I was gonna say that's like a that sweeper. thing." Yeah, that thing is just going at ninety, ninety two. Um, that's, that's wild. Yeah, I bet. I bet he gets like. Negative 10, negative 12. I, I mean, think, he might uh, get yeah, negative 17, no, but no, that's like a, fuck, that's like a full no, I was, sweep. I think I was exaggerating. Um, but like negative 10 even is like a full slider. Yeah. I can see that. Um, yeah, I think it was 10, maybe a little bit more. But he – that's a big dude. And he's really he was really good. He's been around for ever, five ever. We're going we're gonna to move on, but I do have, I have one more. Alex Cora is kind of a pretty big deal. Yeah, he's been around too. He's um, – somebody said the other day, remember when – I for, completely forgot. He was doing Sunday Night Baseball too. Do you remember that? Yeah. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. You know, he came into driveline uh, when they played here, and uh, him and, like, the whole Red Sox front office were in here, and I said, hey, Zach Short, go, go get him. Go, go get Zach Short. So that's kind of like, you're welcome. Thanks. Like, I got you. That's what I told him. That's love. Yep, I was in their ear. I said, "You're gonna want this guy. He's a good player. Might maybe have an ingrown hair, maybe but I he's can a good start player." Contributing and stop getting my fucking head out of my ass. Have you talked to Brenda much? <laughs> um, yeah, he called me when I got traded. Um, and then I saw him the day after. He actually, I met him years ago when he was still playing. He would work out and throw at Sacred Heart. Which Whoa. is like, you know, you Yale where he went was twenty five minutes away. Like they don't I, have the facilities the Pios do though. That court four man, tell you what, that'll get you right. They'll get you right, right where you need to be before the season. <laughs> For the listener, Craig Breslow was an assistant GM with the Cubs uh, before taking the director of pitching. Of, I think he's GM, not president of baseball ops, right? GM, correct. No, he's I think he's GM. president oh, of baseball ops. I, yeah, he's president of baseball ops. He's the president yeah. of baseball ops with the Red Sox, but he was with the Cubs for a number of years uh, in our front office and a lot of conversations with him. So the Cubby, the Cubby right, crossover continues with the with the Bo Sox. They, uh, he, played, they to... he played for the Red Sox, right? He played for the Red Sox, yeah. 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 And he was actually still living in Boston and has lived in Boston for a long time. So really he... awesome opportunity for him. They said that he was his nickname was like the smartest man in baseball when he was playing. I'm pretty Check sure. Out. Let me see what he majored in. He uh, he remembered me though when driveline when they came and visited. Yeah, really? He said hi to me, and I was like, yes. I told other people because we like we knew their front office was coming in. I go, if Breslow doesn't remember me. It's gonna hurt my feelings a little bit. Major in nobody. molecular biophysics and biochemistry. So nothing, nothing too smart. Yeah, no, yeah, not too complicated. It's not manager. as good as my general studies degree that I'm about to get, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Dakota, you said you had a number of topics for us to discuss on the podcast. Uh, I had 10. Um, one of them was Zach's hip turn. I was curious about that. I wrote that down. Um, some of them are more just like smaller notes. Uh, one of them, first one I have on the list, was Jared Jones for the Pirates. Uh, in seven starts, he has struck out 52 and walked five. And I was like, that is absurd. Zachary? He threw against us when I was with the Mets. He threw 59 pitches, nine balls, and they took that's, him out. That's absurd. Doesn't he throw like high 90s too? Oh, yeah, brother. All of it. That's what's <laughs> even more impressive. All of it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, All he's throwing a hunch. He's throwing a hunch. Oh, that's crazy. But uh, those yeah. are, I mean, those are stupid. Those are stupid numbers. Uh, we go to Pittsburgh. We have the Padres coming into town. Glad that they got a rise before uh, they got here. And um, and then we go play the Pirates. So I don't know if we're going to get them or not, but we will see them for the first time. That was another one of my notes. We can move on to that one. Uh, a rise to the Padres. Very rare you see a blockbuster type trade like that this early in the year. To be honest, I kind of love the GM's comments of the Marlins where he goes, it's very unlikely we make the playoffs this year. It was a deal we couldn't turn down. And I was like, He's not wrong per se. I know that I know that Sandy is hurt. Um 
and they traded they traded away somebody maybe early maybe this off season maybe they had a couple guys they didn't resign like Garrett Cooper Solaire you know I'm trying to think if they was made it another, Rojas there a couple years ago a couple years What's ago but not last year I don't know a while ago they might have made a trade too before the start of the season traded somebody away but I saw on I think Hosmer actually tweeted it who. Eric Hosmer is a great follow on Twitter. If you don't follow him, he's very funny and he's got a new pod out. We're obviously the best podcast in baseball, but if you need another one, uh, but <laughs> Oz tweeted something about like, they made the playoffs last year and like that team, that team was like, legit. they were over 500. Dude. I think they made the wild card round. Correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. Tom. Yeah. But I like, believe they did. And then before the season, I know Sandy's hurt, but like they're Dude, selling all off of their and... all of their pitchers are hurt. Lazardo's hurt. Lazardo's hurt now, but we faced him. Yeah, okay, but I mean, I'm just saying, going into the season, yeah, the fact that they weren't like acquiring to make another run at it. I know tough division. I know when your ace is hurt, but. Just, just kind of nuts, and obviously, Rise big part of that team. Probably a little bit of a blow for the young guys that were getting to learn from him, but great deal for San Diego. Very interesting, just from like an economic standpoint, that essentially they traded Rise, but not only did they trade him, they paid his contract, and which is basically paying for prospects. You know, they're paying yeah. his full boat. San Diego's just paying league minimum, and that essentially is just paying for the prospects return that they're getting they did is, get quite it's a an few, interesting like, phenomenon that's kind of started lately they got a few like pretty high prospects though didn't they yeah i forget like the their rankings but like i think like at least from the little digging i did on twitter like people seem to think like they got a very good return for him yeah it's interesting too the way i don't know is a rise DHing? where is he playing because they have, have cronenworth bogarts kim and then I don't know who they were playing at third because Machado was kind of like banged up. He was DHing when we played him today. Uh, today he played second, Cronenworth at first, Machado at third, Kim at short, Bogarts DH. I'm so I'm sure they'll kind of run a rotation there because mm-hmm. Rise can play first, he can play second, which means Cronenworth can play third if Manny needs a DH day, and you know they can kind Bogarts of can play any of the three really. Yeah. Second, short, third, like, and then, yeah, Cronenworth's a Swiss Army knife, like you said. So, like, they'll just probably rotate through. And I mean, that's a pretty good leadoff hitter to stick at the top of your lineup. Yeah. Like, what, hitting 320 what a this year. Plethora of, of humans to fill the lineup. I mean, they, is... we, when we played them in San Diego, you know, we, we had a good series kind of back and forth. Um, and we lost two out of three. We had a big lead that we gave up, but we lost two out of three. But it, it, they're they're a good team. Like they're a good team. With they went and got ceased too. So you know, I know Musgrove just went on the on the IL, but they have Darvish, Musgrove, Cease, uh, Michael King. And I think their fifth starter was a knuckleball guy. We didn't face him, but you know, they did a good job with offseason acquisitions in the bullpen with Juan De Peralta, like. They swore as their closer just throws hundred that you can't hit. He is he signed a deal long term. They went and got uh Matsui, the left handed Japanese pitcher out of the pen has been good for him. Like it's just a it's a pretty solid team all around. Not really talked about in the West because of the just run that the D backs made and then how good the the Dodgers are, but it's a good team. Yeah. I I like the trade. It is it is very rare to see those big of deals happen this early in the year too. Like that yeah. was the only kind of strange part of like, whoa. That's not supposed to happen yet. Yeah. Yeah. And I think players, fans probably always wonder, like, why not? Like, if you're, com- if you're compete, mm-hmm. like, the reason I think there's a lot of reasons, but one is the, if you're trying to make a trade that early, you probably don't have a ton of leverage and you're going to maybe overpay, some might say. But, um, you know, if there's a need, a lot of times fans, especially early in the year, like, hey, we're a good team. There's a need. Like, well, you just go get the guy now because if you wait until July and you miss the playoffs by three or four games, like what if what if we could have won a couple more games if we would have got that guy two months earlier? That's why it's probably really cool to see, like, if you're a diehard Padres fan of like, hey, like they're going for it. Like they, you know, they've gone for it. They 
got Soto a couple years ago, like all the moves they made to bring in these big free agents, Darvish, all those guys, Machado. And it's like, hey, like we're still trying here, like traded for Cease. It's like we're we know the West is tough, but we're giving ourselves the best chance we can. And that's that place is when I first came up, you know, there was decent attendance, but like a lot of Cubs fans and like not great day game attendance on getaway day or whatever. It's packed every day now. Like it's packed every day when you go there. Like it's it's sellouts every night. The environment is great. Like it's the fan base loves it and they should. It's awesome. hundred percent. Um, next thing I had, Tom will love this one. You know what else I like, Dakota? Our friends from DraftKings. Bottom of the ninth. Two outs. Bases full. Down three. The crowd on their feet. The drama of baseball is real. And so is all the action at the DraftKings Sportsbook. From the first pitch to the final out, DraftKings has you covered with same-game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and so much more. And if you're new to DraftKings, you got to check this out. New customers can bet $5 to get 150 in bonus bets instantly. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code COMPOUND. New customers who bet $5 can get a $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's code COMPOUND only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Aaron Judge. First career ejection. I believe I saw he's the first Yankees captain to be ejected since maybe Mattingly. Yeah. Someone like that. It was like back like 91 or something like that. Jeter never got tossed. No, come on now. I don't even know if Jeter ever argued. He's a saint. In the video of it, <laughs> this Ian, I bet you loved it because I loved it. The video of it of Rizzo in the dugout being like, that's soft as shit. That's soft as shit. He said, Just he, said, so he said, that's the softest shit I've ever seen. Yeah. Well, great. because like you, John Boy did a great breakdown of it. Like he gets called for strike three. It's a ball. Um, Judge has been called. He gets screwed a ton. I've just, I mean, he's a big guy. Like it's probably tough to determine his zone. Um, but yeah, like he gets screwed a lot. He gets screwed again. It was a, one of those, like you guys talk about all the time, like a three, two count strike three. So it's like, between a walk and a strikeout, like you can't, like you're screwing me over there. Like I don't even have a chance to continue the at bat. Um, and he just goes like, he just is like, that's a shit call. Like you've been shit all night. And then he throws him out and he's like, for that, you throw me out for that. You know, it's crazy. You can basically say whatever you want, but as long, as soon as you say the word you, mm-hmm. that's like the magic word. I, I've heard that from multiple people. Like, you can say anything, like, that's bullshit. Like, that's a bad call. But if it's like, you missed that, like, you made a bad call, it's like, oh, see yeah. ya. You, yeah, you can say whatever you want. As soon as you say you. That was a that yeah. was a little bit of, I mean, that was a quick trigger. I think Judge has a pretty good reputation for, obviously, this is his first ejection in, what, eight years? Like, he has a pretty pretty good reputation for not, arguing with umpires and not, you know, blown up on guys and for getting screwed. It actually was a strike. Um, it was on, it was a fastball on the corner. Oh, whose side do you want? I am on what, the side what of is, truth. What is that? I'm on the side of truth, Dude. okay? And it was a strike. What that is that? Doesn't make, hey, when you got thrown mean, out, was yours a strike or no? No. No, of course not. I actually, okay, sidebar, we're facing Joe Hudson, or Joe Hudson, Joe Ross, uh, who's on the Brewers? And I'm looking back at my video 2019, my one ejection. <laughs> John Gomes behind the plate, Joe Ross on the bump. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he didn't say enough there. He wasn't in his face. He wasn't. He was talking to him as he was walking away. Getting getting ejected with your back turned to the umpire is it's tough. Tough. Yeah, it's tough. Not throwing stuff, not making a fit, not hands in the air, or like walking away with your back to the umpire, not making a scene, and getting tossed is tough. I think that's what I agree. Like, that's the issue I had with it is like, he's not in your face screaming and hollering, like making you look bad. Like, he said he didn't like the call. He was walking away. Like, just let him go. Like, let him. Typically, they do just kind of let you get away with that. But, especially like Zach said, I, yeah, especially someone that's like, 
wait a second. You can't throw me out. I've never been thrown out. No, yeah. you can't throw me out. I'm throwing you out. <laughs> I'm throwing you out. Ooh, the next one I had. This is a, this is a tight one. I don't know which way I lean on it. Uh, the play at home, I believe it was against the Mets with Amaya possibly, allegedly, blocking the plate, um, standing on the plate to receive the ball, however you want to interpret it. Um, it was called, it was reviewed and still called out. Uh, Ian with a great uh, relay throw um, to get him out at home to win the game one nothing. But a lot of uh, a lot of chatter online about that call. Ian, thoughts? I know what Ian's going to say. So Zach, thoughts? I, I'm saying like the letter of the law, like not right. like what do the I think it should be? What I think it should be? Not stand on the plate. Correct. That's Maggie, where I stand. Miggy. Hey, El Kangri, right? That's his name. He had his whole size 12 shoe cleat on the middle of the plate. But devil's advocate, Pete did kind of have a lane. He had a lane. Yeah. Slide. Can Okay. He did have his foot on the plate. His foot wasn't on the front corner of the plate. Oh, it it does on the middle. It says you cannot stand on the plate. Can you listen to me? Can you listen to me? (laughs) I think letter of the law does say you can't stand on the plate. Can't have a foot on the plate. It does say that. The photos that MLB sent to show like what blocking the plate is or like what is illegal before you catch it don't look like what Miggy was doing. Hmm. And, I think and Pete did Pete did have a place to get in there. I think I think the whole rule is very challenging. And I do think like as correct. a base runner, when you're running towards home and you see that guy catching the ball and coming to murder you with all of his gear on, and like there's catchers that go and like really drop down on you, and there's guys that more swipe tag, but like that's a scary place to be. And trying to slide head first to tie the game and like get there as quick as you can, but like fingers, head, shoulder, like there's just a lot of things that can go wrong. Um, And it's really hard. Like you see it all the time with guys, when guys slide in, like sometimes guys slide past the bag and try to touch it with their hand. Like sometimes guys will try to slide feet first and that foot kind of hovers above the base. Like Pete slid head first and his hand kind of popped up over home and then came back down on it. And like, it's just, it's really hard to make us like when it's a close play to make a competitive slide in there and touch the base without like risking injury. It was, it was one where, like we said, like, I think letter of the law says it's blocking the plate. Like you can't stand on the plate unless you're going to receive the throw and he was not going to receive it. Like the throw didn't take him to that position. Do I agree with that should be blocking the plate? No. I don't think like he, like you said, Pete had a lane to slide in there. Like he had an opportunity to get to home. But I think letter of the law, what the rule says, I think he should have been ruled blocking the plate. That was that was my takeaway from it. It's tough too, because especially where we are today, like if he were to make contact with Miggy at all, like he's the bad guy. He ran him over or he's like, this. that's why we have these rules, you know, but like, if we're not going to enforce it, then what is the point? Or if, if there's so many, if there's so much gray area, it's the same thing with like blocking the base now in the infield, like either yeah. do it or don't like, why, why are we even like, I understand. I think if you're going to drop a knee on somebody and it's pretty malicious or if it's like, obvious like yeah okay hey let's not let's not do that you know but like Mm -hmm. if we're gonna have this huge gray area and we don't know when or if it's gonna be called what's the point it puts everybody in a shitty position including the umpires and it's just impossible it 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 made it obviously more amplified because it was the third out of the ninth inning the run would have tied the game and it's literally like the difference between winning and losing the game that call so maybe not winning per se but like it's like Oh, you lost. So that that just kind of amplified it, I think, even more. Like if that happens in the second inning of a game, maybe it doesn't get as much buzz, but just the situation of it made it uh, 
pretty big, pretty big deal. Dubby's needed it. It was a long review. Let me tell you, it was a long yeah, review bet. waiting out there I bet. to see I what was, they were going to call. Well, right? And then it was a hot the- mic. He said it and then left the mic on as Mendoza Dude, came and, up and yelled at him. And I think the he said, he said, blocking the base is confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> or, and, yeah. And I there went, is no I blocking went, the base. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> and and then stands out and it was like, okay. Uh, the only the funny part though about the ump was like Mendoza's yelling at him. And he's like, I don't know what you dude. Like, talk to New York. Yeah, like, I don't make York. the call. Like, it is not on me anymore. We're sitting there, like, talk to the hand. I don't want to hear it. He's that's what he said to Mendoza. He's like, I don't know what you want me to tell you, man. It's not my call. Usually, you get thrown out as soon as you like take a step after replay. They're like, Jim, don't do it. I'll give you two seconds, Jim. Yeah, but I think it was like the game's yeah, over, and it's game. like, yeah, ah. of course. It is what it is. Ian, did can we talk about when you tried to take a wide turn at yes, first? And, I tried it again today. I tried yeah. it again today. Can you explain that? Because I saw that. That was very funny. So, one of my favorites, Andy Green, always had he had this play where he said, if you hit a dribbler to first, technically you can take your turn like you're going to second base. In the rules, if you take a turn like you're going to second you can establish your running lane and you can round the base like you're going to second base so was that that was in boston in boston i hit a dribbler to first and i'm running down the line and this is the first time in my career i've tried it and i go okay i'm gonna try it i'm already out i'm gonna try it so i i was a little or no it was in new york because it was in new york it was in new york and so I, in, I'm i running towards first, and I go, you know what? I'm going to try this. And I start making a turn like I'm going to second. And it was a little late, and so I kind of was, like, avoiding the tag a little bit. And they called me out of the baseline. And I go, I, I was a little frustrated. Didn't get any hits in New York. A little frustrated. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to second base. Why can't I make the turn like I'm running to second base? So now you're out of the baseline and it's a play that an umpire will never let side. They will always call you out of the baseline. But like, I think by the letter of the rule, like if you start your turn early enough, you should be able to do it. And so today I did it again. I hit a fucking dribbler first base. And I, I, this time I went even sooner. I went even sooner to start like rounding. halfway down the line. And, you're and like, I, started, I started rounding to go and I'm going, you know what? I'm just like hoping the first baseman freezes and just goes like, what's happening? They don't say anything. They called me out of the baseline. And I went up to the umpires and when I was going out to left field and they go, why can't I do that? Why can't? And they were, they were like laughing at never, you. They were like, you're never going to be able to do that. I'm like, cause it's like, an that's not thing. the like- rule. The rule <laughs> is if I want to, if I want to have a double on a dribbler, I can just go, I could bunt and I could just go running around. Like I'm going to second base. I, yeah, I, I kind of like that, but I agree. Like, I don't think you will ever in a million years no. be that, like, have that be allowed. I think by the, I, that's another, I think by the letter of the law, I should be able to do it, but they will never let me. You should just continue to try it. Hopefully you don't hit many dribblers. I don't want to hit but, any more dribblers but, at first base, dude. But if you do, keep trying it. I'm going to keep trying it until they let me. Um, The two injuries last week, Trey Turner. Um, I forget what was his injury. Hamstring hamstring he's out mm-hmm. like six weeks i believe four to six oh. weeks and mike trout <sighs> knee oh. surgery listen that one hurts and you could tell I, how he was too i'm so upset about i'm sorry for trey turner as someone who has been dealing with a hamstring it stinks i don't like it i'm sorry it super stinks mike trout with 10 pumps still leading the league, even though he hasn't played for two weeks, like meniscus surgery going to miss who knows 80, a hundred games. Like I am, I'm sad. It's one of those baseballs just better when he's playing. Like it's yes. just better when Mike Trout's playing. Like even and if the angels aren't in the race, like it's just better when Mike Trout's out there. And I, I love watching Mike Trout home run highlights, but also I, I think when you're playing in an era and you're only going to get to play for so long, mm-hmm. you want the, 
great players from your era to be remembered as the greatest players to ever play. And like Mike Trout is Mike Trout is the guy or one of the guys that you will tell your kids and your grandkids. And like, yeah, I played against Mike Trout. Like I competed against Mike Trout. It was, he was the best player I've ever seen play baseball. Like that's the guy. And for the sport, like just want him to be healthy. And like, I want Mike Trout to hit 800 home runs. Like I want Mike Trout to put up the career hall of fame, like longevity stats, all the counting numbers. Like, I think he is such a gifted, talented baseball player and so, so special. And I hope he gets healthy and comes back and hits 10 more homers because he'll hit 20 every year. He just needs, he just needs like 30 games. games. He needs like, yeah. I kind of like this little man crush that's developed over the past month or so of you for Mike Trout. I love Mike Trout and I won't take the slander because you know what else pisses me off? Because now we're going to hear the slander again. I now, know. No, he hit 10 homers in his first 10 games. The MLB is going to do, MLB Network's going to do their top 100 players. Mike Trout, number 28, because he didn't play. It's like, no, no. That guy is a top five player in baseball. No matter what. With one leg. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> Zach. That was a funny laugh. <laughs> Zach's Zach's got the Benadryl flowing. He's dealing with <laughs> hives. He's playing injured. What's your next thing, Dakota? Uh, next thing I had. I always love these. I'm sure the MLB wouldn't be happy I say this. Um, I love a good brawl. Fans love a good brawl. Uh, Rays Brewers, full out brawl. Can I say? I kind of love it. Can I say one thing before we talk about this? Yep. I got a pet peeve. The okay. MLB. It's not the Major League Baseball. Just Major League Baseball. It's MLB or it's Major League Baseball. It's not the MLB. But when I say the MLB, I say like the front off or like the offices, like the people that run the MLB. I'm not saying like the league. Like I'm saying like the league. Yeah, like the the commissioner and whatever whatever other positions are in there maybe i don't even say, know yeah maybe say the league maybe say okay i hate the, when mlb that sounds like a horrible sentence i hate when the MLB, mlb sounds like, like the mlb sounds like you doesn't sound good sorry Zach. uh yeah they had a little they had a little altercation up, a little fight there were some suspensions <laughs> uh we still had to face freddie peralta today um, because I think he he is uh, appealing his suspension, but I just I love a good I love a good I love when things get a little heated, get a little spicy. It it's amazing. Like if you're getting suspended for a minute, like they oh, sent. Yeah. I think Uribe was the other one that got suspended. They sent him down or put him on the IL so he doesn't have to serve it until he comes back or something. Yeah. Uh, so they weren't short in the bullpen. So. At some point, he's going to have to serve that, and they're going to have to be short in the bullpen. I don't know how that works, but I think what I think what I like about it is like even even when there's not a fight, but like bench is clear, and then like it's like oh, I can't wait till these two teams play again. You know what I mean? Like old Dude, rivalries. That's how, like that's, that's so how fun. it was like growing up with Red Sox and Yankees. Like yes, I remember like even my mom was like you know they would always usually you know play on the weekends, and she was like hey you know like. Yeah, we're not doing much. Like, my mom is always moving. And she's like, yeah, you know, going to watch Red Sox, Yankees. Like, that was, like, a, a thing, bro. Like, and now, you know, obviously times have changed. But, like, you know, you see those old clips, bro. Oh, my God. I different. know. I'm kind of. Like, would you say, though, be, and, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think guys back then kind of stayed on the same teams for a little bit longer. And it just got, sure. like, annoying. And, like, even back in the schedule – two years ago, like you play a team 19 times a year, like you're not going to like somebody on that team. Like, especially 100%. if you face a pitcher, if you face a pitcher, like you somehow draw him, you know, out of those 19 games, you get him however many starts. Like you just look at him one too many times and you're like, I'm sick of fucking seeing this Bro, guy. in the minors, we'd play six game series. I yeah, like someone by the end of six games. I'm like, I'm yeah. so sick of seeing this guy in the box. Like if somebody's either really hot or really cold, like their antics, you see them on the other side, you're just like, cut it. Like, shut up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think the same way when you do that, when you're on, like, you're <laughs> yeah. struggling, you're throwing your shit. If you're happy, you're saying hi to everybody. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, 
I, yeah, I think it's just more years, like, especially with the Yankees, like, they did such a good job of, like, keeping those groups together. Like, obviously, you know, the Jeter, Masada, Pettit, Rivera, Mariano, like, those guys Roger all stay together. But then, like, when they sign, like, they would sign, like, guys for long term deals, A Rod and Teixeira, and those, and they would be there for a while. And so, like, that whole team, like they played 19 games against the Red Sox every year with the same group for like eight years. And then Red Sox, same thing. Like they had a lot of those guys that were there for a long time. You know, there were some guys that were in and out like David Ross and Napoli and some of those dudes like a little later that were like two, three year players, but like just a little different now with guys. It's like, it's really hard to stick with the team for a long time. Well, that's like when Johnny Damon left to go to the Yankees, it was like the, like they couldn't believe he did it. It's like that can't like you can't do that. Yeah. Like nowadays it's like ah whatever. Yeah. Like it's I mean, the Red Sox just seen. traded Verdugo to the Yankees. Yeah. Like that's yeah. and it's it like, never ah. happens. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of hoping Scotty brushes uh ZS one eight off the plate once he gets back so we can get a little uh rival. What a time that's gonna again. be. Could what a imagine? time that's gonna be. See, just I will, brush I will, you back. I, will, I don't want him to hit you. I don't want him to hurt I you. I will helicopter my bat at him. <laughs> You'd get so many games. <laughs> like, no, hey, we're guys, friends. Guys, it's cool. It's we're friends. Friend. It's my we're friend. Friends. Come on. That would be great. Classic content. Raz. We're just Raz and just a couple buddies out here. It's you guys never, you never fought your friend before? <laughs> uh, Zach, you launched your bat at him. Yeah, it's a joke. Right. It's a joke. Right. We didn't hit him. Dakota, <laughs> how, many, how many more things do you have? Uh, Two. Okay, go ahead. You want the next one to be brought to us by Bruce Bolt? Nope. Okay. Danny Um, Mueller's hot take is going to be brought to us by Bruce Bolt. Okay, the next one I have is the MLB. I think this happened like a week. Uh, MLB came out and said uh, they were going to fix the jerseys, uh, and they will be done by next year. So, perfect. (laughs) We're good. (laughs) So, it's fine. It's all fine. They'll be ready by next year. Yeah. Also, there's, there's on top gonna... of that, on top of that, sorry. Still, I think like eighty percent of the teams don't have their city connect uniforms. I think a lot of teams like just still don't have them, and it's like, how's that possible? Where are they? Make them like you have factories. Make them. What are you doing? Make the jersey. Uh, uh yeah. The the jerseys are gonna be. Uh, there's gonna be some fixes. I don't know what the final fix is gonna be. They're definitely gonna go back to the bigger names and lettering. Um, I don't think Fix they're gonna the be all the. Way, I don't think they're gonna be all the way back, but they're gonna be pretty close. And they're working on trying to fix the color and the sweat issues with the grays. We'll see what happens there. But um, custom pants are gonna come back. They're still gonna use the bucket system, but they're gonna actually give you the the customizations that we used to have on the pants. I think they're gonna go to a better thread count on the seams, so the guys don't blow out the whole side of their pants anymore. Um, so. Positives coming out of that. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some more clarity in the summer about exactly what that's going to look like. But I think we all knew, at least the players knew, that this wasn't going to be fixed this year. Um, but only having – it'll actually be funny to see if, like, the small names become, like, a collector's item thing. Or, like, I'm really interested to see what, like, the – I think jersey sales have to be way down. Like, I, it, yeah, I can't imagine that fans are going to the team store and being, like, give me one of those. So – um, I think we'll see kind of at the end of the year how down Jersey sales are and what the impact was. Well, and was, like I said, with statement, well, <laughs> that was like he was given a press release. Yeah. Um, and like I said, with the City Connect, like I feel like that's one of the more, at least my opinion, like that's a jersey I'd want. Like, it, like say you already own a classic, whatever Red Sox jersey, like you want their City Connect jersey now. It's like, oh, those are sick. Like I want one of those, and it's like. How do we not have these yet? Yeah, That's don't, wild. Don't exist. Zach's it's talking like, to us from the corner of his room. Zach, why don't you go sit by that lamp back there? Dakota, what's I'm, your next uh, topic? Uh, last thing I had hey, was... Why are you being a dick? That's, that's rude. <laughs> the last two minutes, whatever has come out of your mouth has just been rude. No, he gave a press release. Still can be rude. <laughs> um, last thing I had was... Uh, a Cubs update, Shota, Imanaga, and Javier Assad are in a two-man race for NL Cy Young so far. Um, they happen to play for the same team. Um, Come on, and Ian, then, let's go. Continue, continue your meanness. Come on, say it right now. Let's go, big tough la- guy. 
And then the last part of the Cubs thing, Saya and Belly might be back this week, and Steel should be back this week. So three Steely's big guys tomorrow. coming back. Ste- I didn't Steely's know if that was tomorrow. public knowledge or not, so I didn't want to say that out loud. Yep. Uh, pretty sure it is. If it's not, that would be crazy because he is starting tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, this well, either way, by the time this comes out. Tuesday, so yeah. we're fine. Uh, yeah, Steely starting Monday, and then uh, Belly and Saya. Uh, at I saw some, there was like a chance they come back later this oh, week. Hopefully at some point next week. Um, which is great. Miss them, need them. Uh, but yeah, uh, showed has been unbelievable to watch, dude. So good. It's ridiculous. Um, tie has been rookie, really good. Rookie of the month, uh, which is really cool for him. And JMO has been lights out. Fun to watch pitch. He's been dialed. He was just dotting with all of his pitches, um, competing his, his ass off. It's been really fun. And then Javier Assad has been nasty. Um, and he got the pitch on Cinco de Mayo. Javi, Javier is uh, Mexican. He's from Tijuana. Uh, so the Tijuana two scene was in effect today. And he was <laughs> uh, on Cinco de Mayo uh, locked in. Two things. Also, One, Hayden was nasty. He's been very good. Zach, before you join. Well, first of all, I was looking at the Cubs stats. The Cubs starters the last three games have gone 18 and a third, zero runs given up. Pretty crazy. Um, Zach, before you got on, Ian was talking about Assad and he called him Javi. And I was just like, I know his name's also Javier, but doesn't that just feel wrong? Doesn't that yeah, just feel, there's only one Javi that was a yeah. Cub. Yeah, no. It just feels wrong. And I love Assad. No, that's nothing against Assad. Love him. But he called him Javi. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I could call him Javi. What would yeah. you call a guy named Javier Assad? As I called him Assad. I literally would just call him Assad. I played with him. I called him Assad. Call him Cy Young. <laughs> call him. They're calling him. Do you want a two seam? Yeah. What? I want a two seam. Hey. Um. Oh, I got. I had, I got those all my notes. If we're done, if we're done yeah. with that. Yeah. Look at Zach. Look at him. Look at him coming in here with a topic. What a boy. The White Sox and Cardinals game yesterday. Oh. I forgot about that. Bottom of the ninth inning, bases loaded. Cardinals. I think it was a tenth. It was a tenth. Okay. Either tenth way, inning. sorry. Cardinals are down one. Mm-hmm. Bases loaded in the middle of an at bat. Two outs, middle of the at bat. Two Two outs. Outs. 001 count. I think it was an 01 count. Yeah, 01. Sorry. Nice. <laughs> Keep and. Going. A three hour rain delay to get punched yeah. out this, this far outside. Nobody wanted you that. See- Nobody wanted that. No. Brebbia was pitching for the White Sox like before they called it, and he literally like goes up to the ump and he's like, "Let's just finish it." He looks at the batter. He goes, "You want to hit, don't you? Like, let's go. Like, let's just do it. Like, let's get it over with." And they're like, "We can't even like see anything." And it's like, "Dude, like, we're not going to sit in a rain delay no. when we're one out away or one base hit away from this being over." Like, you know what else is it. crazy is they Brebbia's pitching righty on the mound, lefty hitting. When they come back, they bring in a lefty, and then they pinch hit a righty in the middle of the at-bat. Yeah. So this dude, <laughs> the dude who was in the at-bat, now goes and takes a seat. I'm pretty sure that that at-bat is still his, out. so yeah. the yes. result is still his. So he's sitting on the bench going, what's going to happen? <laughs> if something bad happens, it's my fault. If something good happens, he gets credit. And then that dude gets his chicken punched on a ball in the other batter's box. No, yeah. no, no. If he, he gets if, the strikeout. The guy that's sitting on the bench gets the strikeout. Yeah, it is wild that anything bad goes to the original hitter and anything good goes to the new hitter, yeah, no matter the right. count, no matter yes. anything else. Yes. yes. Which is wild to me that it's like, I think even like OO count because it technically still be pinch hitting for him. No, because the at bat wouldn't have started. So never mind. No, like that, yeah, that's just no, I had yeah. to think it through. I had to think it that through. happened. Bad, that bad happened to me <laughs> once. That happened to me once in uh in Pittsburgh, I fouled a ball off the ground, came back, hit me in the eye. It was all bloodshot and stuff. And I'm pretty sure the guy, I can't remember who came in, but I'm pretty sure that guy got a hit. You're like, can I have that hit? No. I was like, thank God you didn't get out. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I can't take a strike. Like, nice job. <laughs> nice job. I don't need it. It was wild. I do want to get to Danny Mueller's hot take. Brought to you by Bruce Bolt. BruceBolt.us. Game hats. If you're looking for hats for your team this summer, BruceBolt.us game hats. You can customize them. They got soft brim technology. They got sweat resistance. 
Get a little bit of stretch fit, anything you need, BruceBolt.us, signature series gloves, my gloves, baby blue, white with baby blue. Uh, they have the best batting gloves on the market. Zach loves them. He's wearing them in Boston. Uh, BruceBolt.us. Zach even has the Bruce Bolt like hand guard thing. It looks kind of sick in the Red Sox red. I noticed that yep. today. That's Zach right. swaggy. That's right. They get you a package broke, out right broke away. His hand. Yeah, broke it was sick. Hand. They, uh, they hooked That's it up. Pro. They gave me a bunch of batting gloves. Um, Next day, too, it was great. Got do they do a huge box there? Huh? Do they do like the is Evo Shield the only company that makes like elbow guards and shin guards, or is there other? Or does Bruce? Ball? No, I have I have a uh, a leg guard too. What company is that? Bruce Bolt. It is Bruce Bolt. Oh, nice. So if you need protective, um, yeah. all right. We were just in New York. Bagels are a big thing in New York. If he says oh, bagels you're are overrated, this segment is done. <laughs> you're going to piss Zach off. Okay. It's not what he said. If he says something negative about New York bagels, it's done. <laughs> Tom's ready to go. Tom's too. hot. <laughs> Tom's hot. Danny Mueller's hot take is that bagels are better plain or with butter than with cream cheese, and that cream cheese is gross. Wow, I love that. I also love that. I love, I love that. that. I'm not a cream cheese guy. I don't want any spread. I don't nope. want any schmear. Okay, nope. <laughs> you know what I want? I want butter. Or I don't hate just like a, a bagel, not cut, not toasted, just a fresh bagel. Don't hate it either. But I don't hate a butter it. guy, I do not want cream cheese. I, I, want, I want to shake Danny Mueller's hand. I'm more so like indifferent. Like I like both. I like cream cheese. I like butter. I think they're both good. So gross. I, I, I like cream cheese in my bagel, but I don't like it on anything else. I was just talking to someone about cheesecake. Mm-hmm. Don't like cheesecake. So I'm with. I'm anti cream cheese in almost everything. So I'm kind of with lost, the steak. You lost Zach there though with the no cheesecake. That's you know, where you lose him. I also love <laughs> cheesecake, but I don't like cream cheese. Dude, on the I try. I tried so hard to like. Um, cream cheese too. I've tried so hard on bagels, and I'm just like, it's just that it doesn't do it for me. Gross. I feel like uh-huh. isn't New York more so known not for just like a plain bagel, but like a like a breakfast sandwich type thing, Brother. like bacon egg cheese. Brother, give me a bacon egg and cheese with salt pepper ketchup. That's what I mean. Like I think of that. Like when I went to Manhattan uh-huh. that one day, like I went and got a breakfast sandwich with like a bagel, obviously. I, I went to delicious. There's a Essa bagel not far from our hotel, and I got a banging uh sausage egg cheese and then how long how long was the line uh julie went and got it and she didn't she didn't wait hot move move from nico wait which one ian the one which on what street he didn't go he has no idea yeah (laughs) i don't know like 53rd or 54th a little okay Yes. A little east of Madison, a couple blocks east of Madison, maybe. Yep. Uh, um, hot move from Nico. He was like, what you do is you door dash it for pickup. Yeah. And then you walk over there so you don't have to wait in the line. So that's but, really, dude. We hit a little, we hit a little door dash. She went over, grabbed it. I will say part of like the experience of doing it, though, like the one bagel, the Essa bagel place that I went to, they still had the. The lady, she was sitting there doing like all of the um, taking the orders by hand. Yeah, and it was like, man, like it's part of it. It's the Fenway that's, experience right a, there. Yeah, there's New a York. sub shop like that in uh, in in Chicago that still takes the orders by hand. But uh, I also had a banging sesame bagel actually in Boston. Hmm. At the field in Boston for breakfast, they bang in sesame bagel. I was going to say, Zach, the one the, that one time I was in Manhattan, we did wait in line, and I was like, this is what it's about. This is just the Bro. experience, man. It should be packed in here, and it was packed. It was 50 you... people in a tiny little shop. Yep. I... That's cool That's cool that you went in to Manhattan and hung out with Zach. That one time that I was in Manhattan. Well, that's funny because I, he I didn't, didn't hang Zach. out. He I didn't, didn't hang out with Zach. Though. It's when I played there last year in Staten Island. No, that's the one time. He wasn't there. Um, Ian and Tom, Ian, this is a big it, question. That I, I didn't, I was on my fired leave of absence too. And you didn't even text me to come hang out. I texted to try to get you guys to hang out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like we were texting a lot though. We we're texting a lot. 
Yeah, we were. You guys FaceTimed even about hitting. But real quick, I have one more bagel thing. This is one I know Zach's answer, and I think I'm in the minority on this answer, but I stand firm on it. On your breakfast sandwich, bacon, egg, cheese, bagel, whatever, whatever toppings you get, do you put ketchup on it? Do you like ketchup on it? No. Neither do I. Okay, Tom. What was the question? Ketchup on a bacon. Where are you, Tom? Bagel. Where are you? Okay. I so I wouldn't get a bacon, egg, and cheese on a bagel. I'd get it on a roll. But if I was going to get oh, it with, what? what do you mean? What the fuck? That's how you order why? a bacon, egg, and a cheese. Bagel? Uncultured not? swine. Do you why understand not? about bacon, egg, and cheeses? Don't don't try to come at me on a bacon, egg, and cheeses at like a midnight. It's too late for, to do this right now. Why wait? Uh, why would you not get it on a bagel? On a roll is way better. A bagel's too chewy for a bacon, egg, and cheese. <laughs> This is but going you, way too deep. Just you the get, ketchup. You, just the ketchup the salt, pepper, ketchup. Oh, you always get it with salt, pepper, ketchup, obviously. You ever get hot sauce on it? I, if I want it, I'll put it on at home. I don't want them to put it on. They'll have it soak. I'm with I'm with Ian. I knew Zach was a huge ketchup guy. I'm not a ketchup on my I get made fun of it now sandwich. for putting eggs on my, sam- on my egg or ketchup. <laughs> All right, right. It's, time, it's time for bed. In, That's uh, the Bagel Corner, brought to you by <laughs> Bruce Bolt. Let's do uh, screen time. Let's get the people to screen time and uh, and get them home. Screen time is brought to you by our friends Sloan. at Sloan. Sloan is the world's leading manufacturer of commercial plumbing systems. They're at the forefront of the green building movement, providing uh, smart, sustainable, and hygienic restroom solutions by manufacturing water-efficient products, including Flush meters, faucet sink systems, soap dispensers, and fixtures for commercial, industrial, and institutional markets worldwide. To learn more, visit Sloan.com. Give me your screen times. Mine was way better than I expected, actually. 5.53, which isn't great, but it was better than I expected on a Sunday Wait. doing nothing. Otani went four for four today. Yeah, he's four. pretty good. A couple of homers. Uh, dude. Um... <laughs> screen time, Zach. Come on. 628. Oh, flight. Had a flight. Wait, had a time flight. Out. Time. Dakota. What? Hang out with your teammates. Hang out with your teammates, dude. Dakota. What? Teammates. You, what was yours? 553. So you're 30 minutes and you're throwing up at mine. 30 I... minutes less than mine and you're three hours behind me. Save it for two. The- Two, you no, were in I'm... the central time zone all day. Don't lie. You were yeah, in but I got here at 10, 930 or 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Okay. So the whole day. Is my phone? Nope. I'm saying I sat at home and did nothing all day. Okay. Five two hours. Two I felt good with. You had a game today. I woke up early. My wonderful and beautiful fiance left today. So I was up with her when she was getting ready to fly home. Why are you trying to get cup, like brownie points right now? What'd you do? Always, brother. It's nonstop, you know? <laughs> 320 for me. 320, Tom. 512. I'll take the win. Thank you very much. It's a win. Ian Hap, Sloan Screen Time. Oh, shocker. That's episode Ian, Ian 207 wins. of the Compound if, Project. If we've podcast. done 207 of these, Ian, you've won 192 of them, probably. Yep, that's exactly right. I will stay right there. That is episode 207 of the Compound Podcast presented by Connect Roasters, ConnectRoasters.com. Two codes. Two codes. Compound Club for 25% off your first uh, home run club order and Compound 15, 15% off anything site wide. Go to connectrocious.com, get some coffee, try it out, tweet it at us, and say, I love connectrocious. See you next week.